Ashley here. Welcome to Empowerment Nursing's application of In the Know. This week we are going to be applying congestive heart failure. If you missed our Facebook Live this past week, you can catch that on our Facebook page where we simplify um, the complexity of heart failure into some easy to remember concepts. So this week's question is as follows. The nurse has completed an assessment on a patient with decreased cardiac output. Which findings should receive the highest priority? A. Orthopnea, urine output 20 mils over the last two hours and confusion. B, mild dyspnea with exercise, a BP of 128 over 82 and a weight gain of one kilogram in three days. C, respiratory rate 24, one plus edema of the lower extremities and an O2 saturation of 95 or D, heart rate of 80, blood pressure 115 over 64 and bilateral crackles. So let's go through these one by one by one and use our critical thinking in a process of elimination, which is always a great test taking strategy. A, orthopnea, which means difficulty breathing when lying down. Urinary output of 20 mils over the last two hours. That's not good because urinary output needs to be 30 mils per hour at minimum. And confusion, that's also not good because confusion often relates to tissue hypoxia. So we're going to keep our eyes on A. We're not going to eliminate that one. B, mild dyspnea with exercise, as would any individual have, difficulty breathing a little bit when exercising. A blood pressure of 128 over 82 is pretty textbook awesome. And a weight gain of one kilogram, which is the equivalent of 2.2 pounds in three days, we're not worried about. Nurses worry about plus or minus two pounds in 24 hours. So we're gonna cross B off of our list. That is not going to receive any high priority. C, a respiratory rate of 24, a little bit high. One plus edema of the lower extremities. Edema is a sign or symptom of congestive heart failure, specifically right-sided heart failure, which backs up to the rest of the body. But one plus edema isn't too bad. And an O2 saturation of 95 is awesome, 92 to 100 being the normal. So C definitely doesn't sound half as concerning as A, so we're gonna cross C off of our list. And D, a heart rate of 80, which is normal, a blood pressure of 115 over 64, which is on the low side, but still normal and bilateral crackles. Crackles you hear when there is fluid backing up into the lungs. So a lot of you will look at D and you'll think airway, ABC, airway, breathing, circulation, right? You'll wanna automatically choose D based on those crackles. But let's compare A to D. Orthopnea, difficulty breathing when lying down is extremely suggestive of congestive heart failure. A urinary output of 20 mils in two hours is less than half of what we should normally have in two hours. So that's very concerning. Confusion automatically lends to hypoxia. So decreased tissue perfusion, decreased oxygenation. So that is horribly bad. D has a normal heart rate, a normal blood pressure, and bilateral crackles. Now we would be worried about bilateral cra crackles and we'd be watching them, but that doesn't indicate tissue hypoxia yet, whereas A is definitely clearly lending towards tissue hypoxia. So our correct answer to this question would be A, orthopnea, a urinary output of 20 mils over two hours, combined with confusion. Thank you so much for joining us on this application of In the Know and for the answer to this question and more. You can check out our complete study package. Bye for now.